6.6 sum and differences of cubes sum and difference of cubes is what it reads all right so starting here it reads a binomial a squared minus b squared is a difference of squares and can be factored as a minus b times a plus b. Furthermore, if a and b share no common factors, then a sum of squares is not factorable, factorable over the real numbers. This is what we did last week. In this section, we're going to learn about the difference and sums of cubes. The difference of cubes, notice here, differencing and subtraction sign, uh, and their cubes, perfect cubes, and sum of cubes, these perfect cubes. They are factorable. Okay, so unlike squares, sums of cubes are factorable. So sums of squares are not, the difference of squares are, and you'll see that a lot, and then sums of cubes and difference of cubes are both factorable. So this is going to be, is going to need to be memorized, unfortunately. Let's see what we've got. Okay, down here we can see how if we were to multiply this out through, um, well, it wouldn't necessarily be FOIL, but uh, distributing. We see if we distribute everything and we follow our distribution rules, we you know we get a cubed minus a squared plus or a squared b, so on and so forth, and then we would indeed get a cubed plus b cubed all those terms would indeed cancel and we would just be left with the cube and same of course would be the uh, same with the difference of cubes all right so here it reads to help you remember the formulas uh, I'll, I'll, I'll also touch on the formulas as well but the way I I uh, always kept them, and always do still do keep them memorized. Okay, these are also common cubes that you do need to, to have memorized. I told you last week when we did the squares it's typically you know you, you want to memorize at least up to 10 squared right obviously 11 squared 12 squared or sprinkled in there too but if you're if you memorize up to 10 squared you're you're golden uh cubes if you just honestly if you memorize up to uh five cubed then you'll be good uh to be honest with you i mean i woke, I woke up this morning and somebody told, said hey quick sherman what is seven cubed i don't think i'd say 343 right i'd be like dude why are you in my bedroom but for the most part, memorize up to the uh, five cubes and you'll be fine. Anyway, so on to how I memorize these cubes. Okay, so we'll start with. And honestly, it's 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 actually probably best if we start with both at the same time, right? Not not necessarily drill on drill in on one. All right, so if we have the sum, uh, or or sorry, yeah, the sum of cubes. We notice it is an a uh, cubed plus b cubed. Okay, well, notice the first part is just the a, and then the sign is the same plus. It's a plus b. Okay, whereas in the difference of cubes, a cubed must b cubed. The first binomial there is a minus. So we see that the signs are the exact same for um, the the sum of cubes. The sign in the binomial is, is a as a plus sign, and for the difference of cubes, the sign inside the binomial is a minus sign. Okay, and then what we're going to do after that is it becomes a squared minus a b plus b squared, and that's the same for both sum and difference of cubes. But then notice how the sign changes. Okay, is it go? It goes from addition to subtraction, subtraction to uh, addition, uh, you know, semi-respectively here in this case. I have had students, uh, when, when they're studying for my exams, they'll go plus, plus, minus, plus, you know, for, for, for the top one here, and then they'd go minus, minus, plus, plus. 
whatever helps you out, okay? But just, just remember that for the sum of cubes, that the sign is the exact same inside the binomial, and then it changes in the trinomial. And then, and then real quick, uh, just to kind of harp on binomial and trinomial, um, bi obviously means two, tri means three, right? And these are polynomials, and, and we, that's what we're talking about, is the binomial, the polynomial with two terms, and a, tri, a trinomial would be the polynomial with three terms, okay? So let's get us an example. All right, I'll, 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 I will go about doing this uh, very, very much the way the, uh, the book does. All right, so this is in the form of a, a cubed plus b cubed, okay? So a cubed plus b cubed, right? It, it is a sum of cubes, all right? Well, what was my formula for sum of cubes? Well, again, you might not have it memorized just yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take you through how you know the steps of the thought process on how I would write this out. So it's a sum of cubes. So that this sign Im immediately in here is going to be an addition sign. Okay, so it's just gonna be a plus b. All right, and then the in the trinomial, it was the square of a, and then remember this sign right here is different than this sign. So a squared minus, and it's going to be the product of a times b, oops, sorry, and then it's going to be plus b squared, okay? And I'm going to have to take a break real quick. My cat just came inside, and he always likes to open the door, so give me like 10 seconds. Here we Alrighty, I'm back. Just don't want to, you know, air condition Hendersonville, even though it's really crispy outside, isn't it? Anyways, okay. So there's my there's my formula. A cubed plus B cubed is uh, is equal to a uh, the product of A plus B times. Oh no, I'm sorry. The sum of A, a plus B times A squared minus AB plus B squared. Now let's do this. Let's say, okay, well, what is a in my problem, okay, well, A is just going to be the, uh, essentially the cube root. So what's the cube root of W cubed? All right, well, that's just W. Okay, B. What is the cube root of 64? Well, if you didn't have a chance to memorize it, it is 4. So I'm just going to follow along with this, what I wrote in blue, and kind of, you know, write it underneath this. So, w cubed plus 64, if we follow along here, a plus b, so it's going to be w plus 4, okay? And then a squared, well, that's going to be w squared minus a times b, so that's w times 4 which is 4w, plus b squared, which is going to be 16. Okay, and that's it. And this just looks ridiculous. But this would be a difference of cubes. So once again, we're gonna, we're gonna <clears throat> excuse me, walk ourselves through the thought process of the difference of cubes. Okay, so similar format of the previous one. Okay, so this is in the form of a cubed minus b cubed. Okay, because I know that my first term is a perfect cube, 
and my second term is a perfect cube. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The binomial part shares the same sign as my actual equation, my difference here, difference of cubes. So this is going to be a minus b. I know that much. Okay, and then just like the sum of cubes, this is a squared, but unlike the sum of cubes, this is an addition sign. Again, remember it is the, uh, it's the opposite of that one. Okay, and then, and, and then from here it's the exact same as, as a sum. It, it becomes the product of a and b, and then plus, plus b squared. Okay, so what is A and B here? So A is going to be, okay, so A is essentially the cube root of 27P cubed. Okay, well, what's cube root of 27? Well, that's 3. And what's the cube root of P cubed? Well, that's P. And then B, well, uh, 1,000. I, I did tell you that typically, you know, you you you're, you need to memorize your cubes up to you know five, um, but it is one of the rare instances where you know you just kind of know, right? Uh, the the cube root of 1,000 would be 10, and the cube root of q cubed is q. All right, we're ready, we are ready to proceed now. So we would say 27 p cubed and I'll, and I'll I'll stop rewriting the equation after this problem but I you know I just want to kind of follow along with what's written in the white you know a little bit below, beneath it All right so a minus b so what is my a value well it is 3p what is my b value? Well, it's 10q. So 3p minus 10q. Okay. All right. And then, <clears throat> and then we get to the trinomial. And I probably should have written a little smaller. We'll see, though. Uh, a squared. Well, what is this squared? Well, I square the number and I square the variable. So it becomes 9p squared. And then again, recall that this becomes the opposite sign. Again, just following along with the formula in the white. And it is a times b. So it's 3p times 10q. Well, 3 times 10 is 30, and then pq. And b squared. Yeah, let me, let me write this a little smaller. Well, first of all, b squared, obviously, would be this squared, so 10 squared is 100, and q squared is q squared. So let me write this a little smaller so it all fits. Hopefully. So 9p squared. All right, so hopefully that, that fits on the notes. Uh, I am going a little over the the bars that I told you about, but we'll whatever you you, you know the le watching lecture on YouTube is the main part, right? Anyways, that is example two. Okay, so this is a nice summary of the, the uh, equations we have for factoring so far. Okay, this is going to get its own page. The difference of squares, again, we talked about last week. And then difference of cubes, sum of cubes, we're talking about today. So let's go back to these ideas. And we're going to look at some binomials. And we'll look at these. Okay, so we don't know if these are sums of uh, sums or differences of squares or cubes. Okay, so we'll start off with a. 
All right, so looking at this, I told you last week that one is a tricky, you know, square and cube. Well, I didn't say cube, but I did say square because one squared is one. Well, one cubed is one. Okay, so that's where it's, it's a little tricky. So in this particular, particular case, we'll look at the first term of the binomial. <clears throat> Excuse me. 27. Is 27 a perfect square? No. no there, there's not a number that when you square will give me 27. But it is a perfect cube. All right. There is a number that when you cube it will give you 27, and that is 3. So we're going to be using, it looks like, for this one, it, we're going to be using the sum of cubes. Okay, and I'm not even going to write the uh, the entire uh, equation out again or, or the formula out again. I'm just going to do it uh, aloud. All right, so it is it is a plus b. So a in this situation will be three y three y plus b. So it's going to be plus one. Okay, because one cubed is one. And then realistically, at this point, once I do this. I, I, I ha I've written down my a and b, and then I can proceed here. This is a squared, so this is going to be 9y squared, right? 9y squared. And this is going to be this the opposite sign, so minus, minus a times b. So, you know, I, I have arrows pointing to a and b, right? Um, so 3y times 1, so that's just 3y, so minus 3y. And then we go back to addition, and it's plus b squared, which is 1 squared, which is 1. And that's a. B, oh, okay, so this, this is a little tricky. Um, this is a sum and difference of cubes section. So the first thing I'm going to think is, all right, so is this a perfect cube? Is this a perfect cube? Um, well, I mean, the, certainly the numbers 25 and 4 should jump out at you, uh, and they should jump out at you as not, not as perfect cubes, but as perfect squares. Okay. But guys, this is it's it's uh it's eight thirty in the morning. It's too early to be dealing with fractions, isn't it? Um, well, I got news for you. Well, even if it's seven o'clock at night, it's too early to be dealing with fractions. But again, they're not that bad. Okay, so let's just hone in on one over twenty-five. Okay, so one over twenty-five. What would be the square root? We would say of one over twenty-five. Okay, so one over twenty-five. If I took the square root of it, okay, that is that would be the square root of one over the square root of 25, which would be 1 fifth, okay? So 1 over 25 is a perfect square. And same can be said for 1 over 4. 1 over 4 would be the square root of 1 over the square root of 4, which would be 1 over 2. Okay, so it doesn't look like it, but they are indeed um, perfect squares, okay? They're just in fractional form. So we can proceed there. So it, they're not perfect cubes, they're perfect squares, all right, and we learned that we can only do the difference of squares, luckily we have the difference there, so we can indeed factor this, okay, so it becomes a plus b, a minus b, so we're going to look, it's going to be, the a value would be 1 fifth m, again the square root, and then it's going to be plus the square root of one fourth and one fifth m minus one half. Okay, and that is the difference of squares for b. C. Okay, so C, looking at this um, again. C, Z to the 6th is a perfect square, right? Because, I mean, the square root of Z6 would be Z cubed, right? Um, but 8 is not a perfect square. So we're going to have to proceed with this one as a difference of, uh, or, yeah, the difference of cubes, okay? Because Z6 is both a perfect square and a perfect cube, okay? Because it can be written like this. Or like this. Okay. In either case, perfect square and perfect uh, cube. So that doesn't matter too much, but the 8 does. So we're going to have the a value here, where again we're proceeding as the difference of cubes, would be z squared. Okay. 
And then that minus sign tells me it's going to be a minus sign. Let's erase this. And then the cube root of 8 is 2. And the cube root of w cubed is w. All right, now I've got my a and my b value. Okay, again, this is a. This is b. Okay. So proceeding with the difference of cubes, a squared, well, that's going to be z, uh, z squared squared, which is z to the fourth. And then we're doing the opposite sign of this, so it's a plus. And then it's a times b, so it's going to be 2 z squared w, or wc squared. But we're going to do this way. z squared w. And then it's going to be plus b squared, so it's going to be plus 4w squared. And that's that. I don't know if I like the corner or top, so I'm going to do corner, actually. Okay, so this reads factor completely. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to factor this all the way. So first thing we do, and we haven't had to do this yet, is the first step, whenever we factor anything, is to always look to see what I can pull out of the entire um, equation or, or um, when, statement. Okay. So 3y to the fourth minus 48. Okay, so what can I take out of that? Okay, so I can take out a 3. All right, I can't really take out a y, and that's it, right? So what does that leave me with? Okay, well, that leaves me with y to the fourth I don't know what, but the parentheses there. And then what is uh, 48 minus, or divided by 3? Well, that's minus 16. Okay, so that's, that's just me factoring a 3 out. Okay, so looking at this, all right, well, yeah, right away, man, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a difference of squares there, right? Uh, this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square, so I have a, di a difference of squares. So I'm going to proceed, I'm going to put my 3 down, and this is y squared plus 4y squared minus 4. All right, oh no, well, here we go. We got another difference of squares, right? This is the sum of squares, we're good. We ain't gonna got touch that. But the difference of square, squares, we do. Okay, so we're gonna have to factor that one more time. So we're gonna bring this down. And then y squared minus four turns into y plus two, y minus two, and we're done. All right, well, that's easy. That wasn't so bad, right? It's just, I would say the, the hard part about factoring uh, the difference of squares and then the sums of the differences of cubes, uh, I think the hard part would be, number one, would be to recognize what a perfect square is and what a perfect cube is. Once you get that down, the second hardest part would be to memorize the formulas. And if you have both those down, then you're golden. Okay, example five. All right, we said we're gonna be bringing back old friends, and we're we're gonna be seeing we're gonna be seeing uh, examples of, uh, or we're gonna be, we're gonna be factoring polynomials like this, uh, guys, all the way through through calculus, uh, different different equations. If you get to that point, uh, you will be factoring polynomials like this. So uh, if all right, so number one, if you're using this class to get to college algebra. It needs to be memorized, okay? If you use this class to get to college algebra and then get to pre-calculus and then get to calculus and then, and then you know, get go into a STEM field, then it really, really, really needs to be memorized, okay? So this isn't one of those things that you can just be like, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna just put, put enough space in my brain for it, you know, for, for this week, but then it can be pushed out. No, this is one of those things in mathematics that you're gonna be doing in college until you're done with college mathematics.
Okay, so it, it does need to be memorized how we go about doing this. So, real quick, I'm going to look at all four terms and I'm going to say, can I factor anything out? The answer is no. Okay. 4x squared. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recall what Professor Brown said when we see four terms. He says, when we see four terms, we need to immediately think, oh, we're going to have to split it down the middle. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so if we split this down the middle, what does the left hand side become? Okay, so or what I mean, it is that. What can we factor out of the left hand side? Okay, well, it's like we can factor out a 4 and an x squared. What does that leave me with? That well, leaves me with an x. And then if I take a 4x squared out of 4x squared, what does it leave me with? That leaves me with a, a 1. Okay. And then on the left side, what can I take out? Well, it looks like I can take out a negative 5. And what would that leave me with? It looks like it's going to leave me with, I'm sorry, not negative 5, negative 25. What does that leave me with? It leaves me with an x. And then I take a negative 25 and negative 25. That leaves me with a positive 1. Okay. So I can now rewrite this as x plus 1, 4x squared. Oh, see where this one's going. Okay. So we indeed have a difference of squares here, right here. Okay. The 4 is a perfect square, and 25 is a perfect square. So this x plus 1 can come down. And then 4x squared minus 25, we said there that's a perfect square, so it can be 2x plus 5, and then 2x minus 5. And we have factored that completely. Okay. That's what we just did. Okay, next section. I know today today's today's a two section, sorry. Uh six point seven. Now we're gonna gonna get into why we are factoring our brains out here. Solving equations using the zero product principle or zero product rule. All right, I, I was raised on zero product principle, and I say that constantly. I just, I just feel like zero product principle sounds sounds cooler. I don't know. All right, so let's read. This reads: We have already learned. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I need a laser. There we go. We have already learned to solve linear equations in one variable. Okay. These equations are in the form ax plus b equals c, where a is on a equals 0. This is a linear equation in one variable, sometimes called a first-degree polynomial equation because the highest degree of all of its terms is 1. A second-degree polynomial equation in one variable is called a quadratic equation. Okay? And the quadratic equation is this. Now, some of you may be thinking, and darn, I forgot to say this in my other class, is, all right, well, I mean, we, we all know what the heck quad means, don't we, right? We, we, know, we know quad means four, all right? So I can understand a linear equation in one variable, right? Um, it, it's first degree, but why is a second degree polynomial called a quadratic? All right, and I think, I mean, the, the best of my knowledge uh, is if we look at the x squared, okay? If we look at a four-sided uh, square, uh, a, ooh, a a nice perfect square, right? This is a, is a doinky square. Let's let's try to fix it up a little bit. That's a little better, okay? Uh, with side x. All right. Well, what is the area of this square? All right. Well, it's just going to be x squared. All right. That's the best explanation I've found as to why quadratic equations are called quadratic as opposed to uh, like I don't know biadic. So, I don't know, something like biadric, 
right? I don't know. Uh, but regardless, a second degree polynomial is known as a quadratic equation. Now the zero product rule One method for solving a quadratic equation is to factor and apply the zero product rule. The zero product rule states that if the product of two factors is zero, then one or both of its factors is zero. Okay? So we're looking at this and we see that if a times b is zero, then either a is zero or b is zero. Okay, but it also goes on, you know, as a times b times c times d times e times f, you know, so on and so forth is equal to zero. Then I can set all these terms equal to zero. Okay, it's not just two, it is a, uh, a product. You have to have a product on, on the left side or right side. I mean, if you, you could do zero is equal to, right? But you must have a product, meaning we cannot have. A singular, you know, uh, at the same time, x plus seven. It's not a product, right? But we know how to solve that. We just subtract seven. Um, but we'll see later on why we need to have it in a product to for for it to work. Okay. So applying the zero product rule. All right, so if we apply the zero product rule, we said that if we have a product on one side, then all we have to do is set a equal to zero and b equal to zero, and then we have our solution set. Okay, so let's do this. So this would be my a, this would be my b, and of course it's equal to zero, and that is indeed what the, the, the very definition of our zero product rule, right? a times b is equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set each one of these products equal to zero. So x minus four is one product. Okay, it's one of these numbers. I'm going to set that to zero. X plus three is another. I'm going to set that to zero. Okay. Well, it's not really hard to compute this, is it? So it becomes x uh, is equal to a positive four, and x is equal to a negative 3. And of course, if we plug these in, you would see that it is indeed a true statement, right? We plug in a 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, and then it doesn't matter what this is, 0 times uh, that is going to be 0, and same can be said for the negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Okay, and that's that. Pretty easy. You see why we're doing two seconds today. So next up, we can't just always have it easy, can we? This isn't too bad though either. So we're just going to set x plus 8 equal to 0. All right, well that means x is equal to negative 8. And 4x plus 1 is equal to 0, which means that x is equal to a negative 1 fourth. And that's it. Just solve them for x. These these become very easy. What sixth grade algebra problems? Actually, I don't, I don't know when students begin algebra now, but I think I think I started uh, way back when in sixth grade. I feel like you guys started a lot earlier. I don't know. I mean, I really just could snip the entire example, couldn't I? Uh, Okay, but it helps to explain, doesn't it? All right, so next up, it, it, it's not it's not two binomials that we're used to anymore. Okay, so but we do still have an a times a b is equal to zero. We still do have that, right? So look, we'll just we'll just write it like we like we know, right? Well, a was x. You know, it's not there's nothing else to it. It's not plus or minus anything. So I'm just gonna keep that there. Is x is equal to zero? And then next, did I change? Okay, good. Well, I like to stay consistent. So 3x minus 7 is equal to 0. Okay, we add 7, divide by 3, we get x 
is equal to 7 thirds. And <laughs> again, this is it. I wonder how many examples we have. That's a pretty small little bar. All right, solve a quadratic equation by factoring. Okay, so those problems were pretty easy. They, they were just kind of given to us. But now we're going to have to incorporate what we've done up to this point, and we have to factor equations. Okay, so we're going to factor equations, and then we're going to solve. So let's get started. Looks like we're going to get started with a bang here. I say with a bang because this is not one of the, and it, it's, it's easy-ish to factor, uh, but it's not one of those I can just look at and factor, okay? And I'll, I'll show you, I'll tell you why here in a moment. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite this equation. I'm going to put all my, all my everything on the left and, and a zero on the right. So we're going to have a 2x squared minus 9x, and it's going to be a minus 5. And that's equal to zero. Okay. Now, some of you may be able to look at this and be able to factor. Oh, you know, it's two and one and one and negative five. All right, and and that's fine. Okay, but for those those of you who can't do that in your head, we're going to do the AC method real quick, just to kind of give you a little refresher. If you recall the AC method that we used, we know it was a times c, and in this particular case, it was a two times a negative five. Okay, which is equal to negative ten. But I'm gonna, I'm just going to you know take the absolute value of that because again as I said in my lectures before I don't want to write I don't want to write ten, negative 10 as negative 1 times 10 and then positive 1 times a negative 10 okay so I'm just gonna write this as 10 we'll do the absolute value sign there just to be consistent okay so 10 well what are my factors of 10 well they are 1 times 10 2 times 5 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, and 5 comes back to 5 times 2. So this is it. This is it. Okay, so of these whopping two factors, I really want to fix that 10. It doesn't like when I make small little adjustments for some reason. Anyways, so obviously 1 and 10, when I combine them, will give me a negative 9, okay? So let's rewrite this now in that, in that form. So 2x squared, okay, and we've, I've showed you before, it doesn't matter what number goes first as long as you're consistent. So uh, it looks like it's got to be a negative 10, so minus 10x, and then a plus 1x or plus x, and then I can proceed to write the rest of the equation. Okay, so if you look at this, you agree that this equation is the same as this equation, right? It's just I split up the not negative 9 as a uh, negative 10 and a plus positive 1, All right? And this is another reason why we need to know how to factor by grouping. So we're going to split this down the middle. I can pull out a 5x. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I pull out a 2x. What remains? All right, well, if I pull out 2x and 2x squared, it leaves me with an x. I pull out a 2x from negative 10, that gives me a negative 5. And over here, oh, well, this this is interesting, okay? So it's already in the, it's already, it already looks like this, right? So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to factor out a positive 1, okay? And that will leave me with x minus 5. All right, that makes sense though, right? Because if I distribute this one through, what do I get? I get x minus five, okay? So that's perfectly okay, perfectly legitimate. And that's equal to zero. So this becomes x minus five and two x plus one is equal to zero. So that means that if I were to set this up, set this up with a zero product principle, I would have x minus 5 is equal to 0, which means that x is equal to 5. And then I would have 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, which would be x is equal to a negative 1 half. And that's that.
Solve the quadratic equation, 4x squared plus 24x. Okay, so right away it looks like I can take a 4 out. So I'm going to take a 4 out, and that leaves me with x squared. Actually, I take it back. I can take a 4x squared out. Right, so 4x, and that leaves me with a 4. No. I don't know what's wrong with me again. Ah, it's too early. I had, I had a nice I had a nice long break, and I'm just not, not ready for this, am I? Anyways, so if I take a, a 4x out of 4x squared, that leaves me with an x. I take it out of 4x out of 24x, I get a positive 6 is equal to 0. All right, so then I can set this up as 4x is equal to 0, and x plus 6 is equal to 0. So therefore, x is equal to 0, and x is equal to negative 6. Yeah, sorry about that. That was a little, little hiccup there. But we ended up getting to the solution. So it looks like we have three examples left. And example six doesn't look like it's doing us any favors. Okay. So solve the quadratic equation. All right, so in order to, to even begin this process, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to uh, move everything to one side, and I'm going to have to, you know, clear these parentheses. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clear the parentheses on the left side real quick. So 5x times 5x, well, that becomes 25x squared. 5x times 2 becomes a plus 10x, and that's equal to 10x plus 9, okay? Well, now I'm going to move everything from the right side to the left, so I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides, and they're going to cancel, and then I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides, so this becomes 25x squared minus 9 is equal to 0, and luckily for us, here we are, we see that this term is a perfect square, and this term is a perfect square, so it looks like we're going to be using the difference of squares here. Okay. So what does this factor into? Okay, well, it factors into 5x plus 3 and 5x minus 3. It's equal to 0. And therefore, I'm going to set up uh, my, my two solutions. 5x plus 3 is equal to 0. This gives me subtract 3 x is equal to a negative 3 fifths, and then 5x minus 3 is equal to 0. This gives me x is equal to a positive 3 fifths. And these are my two solutions. Even with two sections, we're probably going to be getting done the same time as the one section, which is why we did two sections, right? Okay, so example seven is y I gave a little bit of an expanded definition to our zero product principle. Okay, so without without having to actually go back, we saw that our zero product principle is if a times b is equal to zero, then you set a equal to zero, and you set b equal to zero, and you solve, okay? Uh, but if you recall, I said, you know, well, that could be A, B, times C, times D, times E, times F, right? And this is an example of why I did that. Okay, every, everything up to now has been, you know, A times B. Well, this is in the form A, B, C, D. A times B times C times D. So what I have to do, and this is actually one of the easier problems we have today, is we're, we're just going to set each one of these terms up equal to zero, okay? So first one, negative six is equal to zero. Y plus three is equal to zero. Y minus five is equal to zero. And two Y plus seven is equal to zero. Okay, well negative six equal to zero, that's no solution, we're done with that one. 
this one is y is equal to negative 3, y is equal to positive 5, and then y is equal to a negative 7 halves. And that's it. So this again was pretty easy, right? I have to rewrite anything, I didn't have to factor anything. It looks it looks a little ridiculous, right? But this is gonna these are gonna be your easiest ones, right? In terms of time, anyways. So that's example seven. And I'm pretty sure that's the last one. And it just wouldn't be a math textbook if we didn't go out with a bang, would it? Okay. Alright, so w cubed plus 5, w squared minus 9w minus 45. Okay, so first things first, is there anything I can take out of all of them? No. Okay, so next thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to have to rewrite this problem. We don't have to rewrite it, but for the sake of being, you know, splitting it down the middle like we have been, or at least showing it, I'm going to rewrite it. So we're going to split this down the middle. Okay. What can I factor out of the left side? It looks like I can factor out a w squared. What remains? W plus 5. Out of the right side, it looks like I'm going to factor out a negative 9. So what remains? W plus 5. That's equal to 0. So I've got a w plus 5, and then a w squared minus 9 is equal to 0. Okay, well that w squared minus 9 should, should uh, be jumping out at you as a difference of squares. So w plus 5, w plus 3, w minus 3 is equal to 0. And then we use our zero product principle here, and you know honestly we can we could we, we can do this in our head right. So we're just going to do that in our head. This is w is equal to negative five, w is equal to negative three, and w is equal to positive three. Okay. And that is indeed the rest of that. So this concludes this lecture.